We still have tropical storm Marco, so uh, kind of maintaining its intensity 70 miles per hour. Notice it has sped up a little bit, moving north northwest at 14 miles per hour, and it is about 325 miles south of the mouth of the Mississippi. So notice there's your circulation. There is the storm and the good news. It's held its intensity over the past couple of updates. That means it is not rapidly intensifying. That's the good news. Now we still think it could become Hurricane Marco later on today, still kind of holding this track. This track has been pretty consistent over the past about day and a half, the best it's been so far. And notice we have it approaching the coast as we go into Monday afternoon and then moving inland as we go into Monday evening. So we're already feeling some of those outer rain bands from Marco as it heads towards the north. And we're going to continue to get those rain bands as we go throughout tonight and going into tomorrow as well. A closer look at things you can see there. Landfall still looks like somewhere possibly west of the mouth of the river, but it still kind of includes maybe eastern portions going over towards St. Bernard at least least in the cone of air. Notice by 7 a.m. tomorrow off the coast by 7 p.m. inland, but still hasn't moved tremendously far and then it continues to move towards the northwest. So it will be weakening as it comes into the coast rather than a strengthening storm. So that is the good news as of now with it. So for today, if you're preparing for anything, you need to do it today because uh, we will have some downpours. But of course, after tonight, winds are going to start to pick up tomorrow. We'll be dealing with tropical storm force winds, possibly in the metro, possibly hurricane force winds on the coast. And you can see there your rain chances remaining pretty high for Monday. By Tuesday, we'll still be dealing with some rain from Marco, but then our attention needs to turn to what Laura could bring us. Now, as I mentioned, we're already seeing some of those tropical downpours pours some of that outer moisture being pulled up to the north from uh, Marco and you can see there are some heavy downpours, especially south of the coast near the mouth of the river. We've got a little band of rain moving through the metro right now and it is generally uh, weakening as you can see there just some spotty uh, downpours as it heads towards the west and you can see more showers off the coast. So this is what we're going to be dealing with this afternoon. We're not even really seeing any rainfall on the north shore. So overall, not too bad right now, but expect more of the rain to increase later on tonight going into tomorrow. So the good news with Marco is it's not in a very good environment for strengthening, and that's why it has struggled to get to that hurricane status so far, all thanks to the wind shear and dry air. Those two things coupled together are not a good recipe for a tropical system. You can see all the dry air in the brown here. You can see the deep moisture with kind of that envelope of moisture with Marco as it moves into this drier air. The other thing that's in impacting it is the shear. The shear is out of the southwest as we have this trough over the Gulf and that's helping to push this dry air into the system and keeping it somewhat lopsided with not a whole lot going on on the west side. Most of the rain is on the north and the east side. So as it moves towards us, that trend will likely continue uh, and that's why we don't really expect it to intensify much more than what it is, which is currently uh, a strong tropical storm, maybe a weak category one hurricane. So I want to show you some of our tropical models and they are in pretty good agreement with that northerly movement. Of course, it gets a little wider in time, so there is still a little bit of uncertainty, but the track really hasn't changed much over the past, you know, couple of days or so or at least day or so. And that pink line right there is the consensus. So that's what we really go off of. And you can see they're kind of centered where the National Hurricane Center is as well. We'll say right towards the mouth of the river, maybe towards the west of the river. Now, of course, that puts most of our area on at least the central and eastern side of the storm, which is uh, going to be the wettest and potentially dealing with some storm surge as well. So I want to show you some of our models uh, and what it could look like as we go into uh, tonight and going into your Sunday. You notice we've got the bands of rain moving through today, maybe a little bit of a break later on. There'll be some breaks here and there. And then as we go into tomorrow, notice by Monday morning, the winds are picking up along the coast. Here is Marco, but notice it's a very lopsided system. You've got a lot of the storms and rain on the north side and the east side. So depending on the track, that's going to determine where the heaviest rain falls. So if it tracks a little bit closer to New Orleans, you might see the heaviest rain from New Orleans towards the east. If it tracks a bit further towards the west, you might start to see, um, you know, more rainfall a little bit over the metro and the North Shore. This model obviously indicating the center going more into St. Bernard, which keeps that heavy, heavy rain over South Mississippi. This could very easily move towards the West. So right now, um, you know, you can't look at these models and say that's what's going to happen because they're going to flip back and forth as well. Notice as we go into Monday night, still dealing with the moisture, some rainfall across the area. And then as we go into Tuesday, Marco starts to lift more to the West, but it's got to pull all this moisture with it, right? So it's going to continue to pull moisture over the area as we go throughout Tuesday. And that's why our rain chances are remaining pretty elevated even into Tuesday. 
wind wise here's what we're looking at it is a pretty compact system meaning the wind field doesn't look very big and it's probably not going to get very big because it's not going to be able to strengthen much uh, and this is what we're looking at on timing monday morning waking up sunrise or so we'll start to see some of those tropical storm force winds come towards the mouth of the river here's port fushon here's grand isle Buras. Uh, and as we go into uh, the late morning early afternoon notice that's when the storm gets closer to making landfall but notice it is weakening that red there the hurricane force winds it's Trunk, meaning uh, the wind field is, you know, we're not expecting widespread hurricane force winds. It should be in a pretty narrow area right along the coast, but we could start to see some of those gustier winds, maybe gusting 35, 40 miles per hour uh, as those winds pick up by Monday afternoon here in the metro. Now, the further north you go of the metro, your wind risk actually goes down, and we might not even see tropical storm force winds like up towards Bogalusa, up towards Poplarville, things like that. So best shot of seeing winds tomorrow is going to be south of the lake and especially near the coast, depending on where the center of Marco makes landfall. So that's what you've got going on with winds. Now down here, it doesn't take much to get storm surge and water rise. So we do expect that still going with four to six uh, feet for most areas along the coast that's outside the levee protection systems. And it really just depends on where uh, Marco does make landfall. But with current thinking, we're going with four to six for most areas all the way from lower Terrebonne up through uh, lower Lafourche, lower Jefferson, Plaquemines, St. Bernard up towards Hancock and Harrison counties as well. And of course, the winds are going to be out of the southeast more than likely in east. So going into Lake Bourne and of course we'll see water rise in the lake as well, maybe two to four feet. So uh, that's what we'll be dealing with with the storm surge. Now something interesting we'll be watching uh, is not only the storm surge with Marco, but our persistent onshore flow is going to continue today or going into tomorrow. It'll also continue going into uh, Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday as the onshore flow from Laura comes on by. So we could have an extended period of waters being pretty high, uh, at least four to six feet. And you can see there in the yellows, that's where we're showing uh, probably the highest water rise for much of lower St. Bernard Parish. Remember, go back to Cristobal. That's where we saw the highest water rise as well. Uh, so we're talking Shell Beach and even up towards portions uh, kind of Waveland and uh, Bay St. Louis up in Hancock County. And of course, down Plaquemines Parish towards the east of the river. But depending on the track, you know, that could that could shift around. So you'll have the strong winds pushing into this. And of course, the lake's going to remain high as well because it can't drain out. So could see some high water for at least maybe four days or so. So something to keep in mind. So that's the latest on Marco. Let's get to Laura. Laura has strengthened a little bit this morning. It's now up to 50 miles per hour. And believe it or not, it's been over the Dominican Republic and Haiti, and it's really not been affected at all. You can see there pretty nice structure for a tropical storm. You've got a lot of the storms on the south side. Here's the center just now coming off the coast of Haiti. It'll be heading towards uh, Cuba and it is still moving pretty fast. It's even sped up a little bit now at 21 miles per hour. Pressure's at 1,004 millibars. Notice your winds up to 50 miles per hour. So that's the strongest it has been so far. Now putting the track on Laura and Laura has still got a lot of uncertainty, but here's what we're looking at. They do have it tracking over Cuba, if not maybe just south of Cuba, getting to the edge of the Gulf of Mexico by Monday night into Tuesday, and then it's into the Gulf well into Tuesday. And of course, we expect it to intensify as it gets into the Gulf. Here's your latest track. We're continuing to see that kind of west trend with the track. We've noticed that for the past couple of days and notice New Orleans not in the cone, but that doesn't mean we won't see impacts from this storm potentially. So notice they have it strengthening to a category one storm by Tuesday, continuing to strengthen on Wednesday. Landfall will likely be Wednesday night into early Thursday morning as a strengthening storm. Still have it as a category two inland on Thursday and notice that goes from near Corpus Christi all the way to uh, kind of the Baton Rouge area and really just in southeast Louisiana. So we could potentially be looking at a strengthening hurricane through the Gulf of Mexico making landfall sometime Wednesday night to Thursday morning. It's looking more and more likely like landfall will be towards the west of New Orleans, but of course that leaves us on the wet side and we'll have that strong onshore flow. So that means uh, the coastal flooding we see from Marco probably won't go down very quickly because of the strong uh, onshore flow and of course we expect rainfall from this as well. Now with all that being said, there is still a lot of uncertainty with this forecast. We've seen it jump around quite a bit and I want to show you some of our models and still the uncertainty we have with kind of the evolution of Laura as it gets closer to the Gulf of Mexico. So you can see there there's a huge spread. You've got your red. That's the GFS, the American model. That kind of brown color is our European model ensembles and then you've got the Canadian model and it's kind of an outlier. It usually is and you can see it is off towards uh, the east. So you've got two different scenarios that 
clearly stand out to you when you're looking at this. Uh, so here's the Edge of Cuba. The difference between the two models is where it comes off when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. The European model has it coming off much further south um, of the, the GFS, the red model here, and you can see there it's able to go further west up towards Texas. So that's the, what the Euro is thinking, more of a Texas landfall. Now the GFS is kind of the flip side of that, and it's coming off more on the northern side of Cuba, the central part of Cuba, and it's able to get a little bit further towards the north and towards the east, towards New Orleans. So you can see the consistency census in the purple there is somewhere in between right along the border of uh, Texas and Louisiana. But I'm just telling you that there's still quite a bit of uncertainty because we need to see how Laura comes off of Cuba and it'll be uh, important to know where its placement is when it gets into the Gulf and one how strong it is once it gets into the Gulf. But either way, it looks like we will have a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico with Laura. It looks like it could be a strong hurricane, if not a strengthening as it gets into the Gulf. And we need to continue to monitor it, to monitor it pretty closely because, um, you know, we could still see some rainfall, on, strong onshore flow and things like that here in southeast Louisiana. Now, wind from uh, Laura would likely move in about a day and a half to two days after um, Marco for our location, at least, and we're talking tropical storm force winds. We could see uh, that moving in maybe by Wednesday morning. So we're saying if you need to do preparations, things like that for Laura, you need to probably do it today as well because you might not have that break in between Monday uh, and or Monday and Wednesday on Tuesday because we could still be dealing with some rain across the area. So that's when your winds could start to pick up. And then uh, if it takes more of that westerly track, of course, it's going to take a little bit longer to get inland, but could see some higher winds over in that direction. So well, let's break down your seven day forecast, kind of what we're expecting uh, here locally. Of course, it's still all dependent on the tracks, but today we'll continue to see the tropical downpours across the area as we go into Monday about an 80% chance uh, of storms and I only have 80 because it looks like it's going to be somewhat of a lopsided system. I think everyone will see at least some rainfall, but the heaviest rain uh, we'll just have to wait and see on the track on that 60% chance of rain on Tuesday. That's because we're still dealing with the moisture and then Wednesday and going into early Thursday is going to depend on the track of Laura right now. It's looking more like that westerly track. Things change. It's the tropics. You know how it is. And we still got, you know, three days out from uh, this thing even getting close to the northern Gulf Coast. And then it looks like our rain chances continue to go up as our go down as we head into um, the weekend. Now, I've had people asking about the rain totals, and this is something we'll have to watch pretty closely as well. And uh, we could see some heavy rainfall from Marco over the next couple of days. Now widespread, we're thinking maybe four to eight inches and eight inches will be on the high side. Uh, but we could see isolated higher amounts because we're going to have banding features set up somewhere. Where that happens, it's really too soon to say. But you can see there, the, the idea is the heaviest rain is kind of from uh, I-59 going towards the east with the current track. So that would include kind of the edge of New Orleans going down towards Lower Jefferson Parish into the east. We could see some very heavy rainfall down along the river and up through St. Bernard Parish and the Mississippi coast. Uh, we could see possibly up to 10 plus inches of rainfall. So we do need to watch not only the storm surge threat with this, but also um, looking at the potential for some uh, from some flash flooding. And of course, our rivers will have to watch our rivers as they can get backed up from storm surge and things like that.